Hello, and before we start today's video, it's worth touching on once again the difference between value and cheap. I'm a kid born of the 80s and the 90s here in the UK. When I hear the word value, I'm thinking quick save, no frills, I'm thinking smart price, I'm thinking smart shopper as I'm talking all of that. And when it comes to NAS, the difference between value and cheap is just as appropriate. And again, I'm going to paraphrase the Dave Gorman joke here, but I have mentioned it before because it is really, really important. Let's say you're looking at going abroad, you're thinking about going from the UK over to the US or maybe the way back and you look at the prices now the difference between value and cheap is that flight is going to cost you 50 pounds a lot of people are thinking wow that's excellent value I must book that if that flight is one nicker that is too cheap and there's every possibility that plane ain't even leaving the ground Hello, and that is right. Finally, 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 Synology has started releasing a new value series. Those of you that have been following Synology for the last uh, five years will know that they have had a very competent value series range for a while. The DS118, the DS218, the DS418, the DS420J, the DS220J, all of them utilizing the same CPU, the Realtek RTD 1296 processor there with varying memory and different populated values there and this started way 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 back in 2018 even a pinch before that we first heard about it. and a lot of users have been sitting there clock watching wondering when that hardware architecture was going to see an upgrade and finally we have got the ds2232 talk about arguably not a tremendous upheaval in most regards it's a couple of very small differences over its refresh to 2018 release ds218 plus and today we are going to delve down into those specifications of what we've learned about this new nas which is coming by the looks of things within january 2023 synology have really done a good job sneaking this out the door without anyone including myself clocking it now straight off the bat this is not the ds223 this is the 220 plus but it utilizes the exact same chassis and it's near enough identical for the purposes it looks like this it's got the same ports and connections for the most part so throughout this video i'm going to be using this to show off that chassis design but it's worth highlighting this is not the physical unit and i will be having the physical unit hopefully very very soon where i can do the full review the testing so let me know in the comments if there's specific things you want tested on the ds223 plus when it arrives to see if it's suitable for you and your data but let's talk a little bit about it so first and foremost this is a two bay value series now it's got two sata ports there that can be populated with hard drives and ssds and yes we'll talk about compatibility later in the video or it might already be on the timeline for you to skip ahead to now this NAS cannot be expanded. It does not support uh, the DX517 expansion. It doesn't have an eSATA port there. It is one gigabit ethernet which are a number of you are going to be for god's sake i want to throw something away but at the value tier that cost effective tier and synology and the priority towards dsm i'm going to cut them some slack on this i didn't expect this device to be greater than gigabit to be frank very few nas brands include greater than gigabit on their proper value bottom of the rung entry point tier there so i'm not going to be too harsh on them it's only the one port um and on top of that the device does have USB ports, and it has three USB ports there. Two on the back, one on the front, all of them USB 3.2 Gen 1. So, again, normally I would rag a brand for not having a newer generation USB ports on it, but there's three of them on this value. It's a value series, and it's got three USB uh, 3 ports on there. So, again, when it comes to connecting uh, backup drives, when it comes to connecting different, although not a great deal, number of supported peripherals, the, the, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think at this entry point into Synology in the DSM platform, this is pretty reasonable to me. I'm not going to uh, give them too much stick for that. Um, on top of that, there isn't any M2 NVMe slots on the base. Again, not going to rag them for that. The value series has never had that on board. Very few brands have. And although at the moment it may seem like I'm going quite easy on it for it having relatively low-end hardware, I think that's pretty reasonable for the value series. Um, one thing I will talk about is the CPU. That is the big question. We have been talking about an emerging uh, CPU that we've seen appearing on different knowledge bases on Synology, uh, the Realtek RTD1619B. I can confirm that is the CPU inside the value series device there. It is a quad-core um, ARM V8 processor there. That quad-core is 1.7 gigahertz per core it does support 4k playback although it does not have uh, meaningful transcoding on board what do i mean by meaningful well uh, this can 
transcode 4K, but it can only do it natively and it can only utilize H.264 there predominantly. If you try to uh, uh, transcode HEVC or H.265, it's not impossible, but the amount of CPU resources there on board is going to make it incredibly um, inefficient overall. But the key word with that processor, of course, is the word efficient, because the value series has always utilized uh, efficient CPUs. This is a 64-bit ARM, which opens the door quite significantly to a lot of the features and services it runs. More than, I'd say, about 80-85% of DSM's applications there. You will be able to install Plex Media Server. You will be able to run the collaboration suite from Synology. You will be able to take advantage of Hyper Backup and a number of other services. However, the more aggressive uh, CPU processed uh, applications, uh, things like higher end surveillance or that AI stuff, forget it. You can run Surveillance Station. There are two camera licenses and you will be able to run a handful of cameras, I reckon, somewhere in the ballpark of between 10 and 20, although they'll probably sit on the official seats between 12 and 15 on the official sheets there. But virtual machines, forget it. That's not going to happen on this machine. That ARM-based processor, the way ARM CPUs work is unlike traditional CPUs like Intel AMD's x86 processors instructions are being handed to the CPU which are then being uh, actioned uh, across the you know spectrum of the whole system with ARM processors the idea is the instructions are compressed in length and complexity so therefore the CPU can perform these tasks with lower um, um, clock uh, utilize or power utilization being used to action them but there are just some processes that can't be compressed down without the CPU just scratching its head and falling over that is the point of ARM that's why you find ARM processors predominantly in mobile devices low powered devices stuff like that and again Hence that word value once again. I must have said it. Well, I'm sure the script will tell me from YouTube there some more than 30 times by now. However, a number of you are also going to wonder how much of a meaningful upgrade is that CPU over that RTD 1296 that we've already talked about in the previous generation of value series? Well, in general, CPU family specs is actually not a tremendous upgrade. Uh, the CPU has benefited from several years of further development by Realtek into this processor, thereby making the average process significantly more efficient, ergo utilizing less power to action comparative tasks. And on top of that, the CPU having a higher clock speed at 1.7 gigahertz over the 1.4 gigahertz of its predecessor in the um, RTD 1296, uh, the 1619B in the newer generation device having that extra amount of power and being more efficient to average tasks means that uh, difference of around 300 megahertz of power is actually going to be a lot more significant because you've got more power to play with and it's going to use less power per task meaning more active simultaneous use more active users at any given time and ultimately more processes you can run but it's also worth highlighting of course this is running on dsm 7.1 much like the value tiers which arrived on the scene originally with DSM 6 and 6.1 and 6.2 and then we're gradually upgraded towards 7, 7.1 and 7.2 in the future, this device is arriving with 7.1 straight off the bat. Therefore, you are running um, a little bit more uh, power-hungry version of DSM anyway. So I think ultimately in terms of comparative CPU, it's all going to even out. Mm, pretty much in the end although i will highlight that the onboard uh, gpu with this cpu and again with arm it doesn't work the same as integrated graphics is still a little bit higher in its power versus that of its predecessor so you are going to see an improvement in graphical management as well now in terms of memory unsurprisingly the value series tier is going to this value series device is going to arrive with two gig of memory just like its predecessor which cannot be upgraded it's ddr4 but it is not ecc error correcting code it's standard class memory the inability to upgrade the memory is less of an annoyance although it is a little bit of an annoyance at this tier once again this comes down to those efficient components and having boards with the cpu and memory and everything soldered chip based to the board you find that more on more efficient scout systems like this this. and it's only when um, we see fixed memory at you know 512 or 1 gig of memory that I get a bit you know annoyed given the DSM can be a little bit hungry on the old memory and cache but at 2 gig I'm not going to give it too much uh, to kick around on there and ultimately as a refresh in terms of hardware it's not a huge jump up but at least they've taken the trouble to you know readdress that um, solution and that CPU which sometimes 
CPU upgrades are more necessitated by the CPU manufacturer no longer supporting a given chip and moving over to a new one than it is the brands themselves. But still, nonetheless, it's great to see an upgrade to this product family there. Now, I said I'd touch on it compatibility because I think it would be safe to say and fair to say that in 2022 Synology took quite a bold position bold you can read into that word what you want um, a bold position on terms of compatibility with third-party hardware on their platforms prioritizing their own hard drives and SSDs in a number of places as well as uh, prioritizing a lot of services that were accessible if you were using third-party storage media same goes for PCIe upgrades as well but that's not really relevant here um, I'm pleased to say that um, hard drive and SSD compatibility on the DS223 is going to be pretty much all br broad and lovely and open. We've seen Iron Wolf on there. We've seen uh, WD on there. It's all fine. The only real contentious issue to my mind is I hate seagulls. Um, the only contentious issue really is the fact that on their compatibility listings, they're only listing support of up to 18 TB drives on this. And that's really only because their own range of hard drives only goes up to 18 TB. But I'm positive beyond measure that this will support 20 TB and 22 TB from Seagate and WD respectively there. So compatibility, not too much of a concern. But what about the old bunts? I've been saying value about a billion times in this. What's going to be the going rate? What's the cost of this device? Well... Synology has a tendency to kind of keep and maintain those price points throughout their family throughout the entire ranges. And generally because one, refreshes happen at different times, but also because they have certain targets and certain boundaries within each tier that they like to maintain. So almost certainly this device is going to arrive on the scene. Remember these do not include your local tax, shipping and more probably around the 260 270 mark in terms of dollars in terms of pounds you're looking at about 250 you know somewhere about that and in terms of euros there the greater part of europe it's going to be something like 270 euros there but again these are all estimates they do not include your local tax there and of course your extra little bit of percentage profit margin there for some retailers so once again in terms of availability but I reckon this is going to be real soon. If you haven't already seen an official press release from Synology by the time you're hearing this, then almost certainly I think this is going to land within the next few weeks, definitely within January 2023 there. And ultimately, this is going to be the kickstart towards more value series devices. Synology always does this. It does one or two value series devices and then fleshes out the whole portfolio. So there will be almost certainly a one bay at the DS123. There'll probably be the four bay at the DS423 and J series devices as well. I feel, and this is based, I say feel, on information I've communicated um I had communication from with some Synology people and third parties that the uh, Play series tier is sort of going away. There is more on that that I'm hearing, but without verification of what I've heard thus far, I can't. I'm not really going to talk about it here. But nonetheless. Well, this is what the new value series tier is going to be with that new Realtek processor. What do you guys think? Remember, keep things in context. Think about value. Think about what you're getting for your money. And remember, Synology, when they flog these devices to you, the price tags are almost always 60, 40, sometimes even 70, 30 software over hardware. They consider DSM the worth the price of admission, at least as far as Synology is concerned. So do bear that in mind when you're thinking about the good and the bad of this device, because I really want to hear what you guys think. Head into the comments. Let me know what you take on board and you think about this device. Is it a good upgrade? Is it a bad upgrade? Is it worth your money? Or is this just going to convince you to go straight to the plus tier overall? There should be a full breakdown and news article linked below over on NAS Compares, as well as um, information and links to other resources on this device and other 2023 and indeed a little bit of information on 2024 uh, Synology NAS releases linked below. Let me know what you guys think. Other than that, click like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to learn more as we talk about the value series. And in the next week or so, dig a little deeper into that CPU now we know more about it. If you need help with your right NAS solution, use the free advice section linked over on NAS Compares. It's the big blue button on the right-hand side of the screen. Use the free community support forum there. Ask NAS Compares, man by me, Eddie, who does most of the work on there. I'll be straight with you. And other members of the NAS community to ask your, answer your questions. And there should be links in the description to take you to Amazon. And one, if this video has helped you, in, in you know choose the right nas or in just general in data storage and two you were going to shop at amazon anyway 
please use the links in the description to take you there. It won't cost you anything extra. And after it takes you to Amazon, to your local Amazon, anything, and I mean anything you buy after that point, will result in a small kickback coming back here to NAS Compares, where it's just me and Eddie. And that kickback, as Amazon Associates, allows us to continue doing what we do. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great week, a great 2023, and I'll see you next time.